Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, we've got a very great guest, and he's an actor. He's a writer, director, producer. He does a little bit of everything. His name is Wes Her Hurley, and he has a film out called Potato Dreams of America. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of the Guru Room, and my interview with Wes will be coming up very soon. This is my Guru Room, and welcome to my nightmare. Okay, um, welcome to Guru, and th thank you so much for taking time out of your night and coming on the show. Oh, no, thank you so much for having me. Definitely, awesome. buddy. Definitely. Uh, so, like, the first thing I wanted to ask you is probably a question I get asked a lot is, what made you fall in love and want to do films uh i i wanted to make films like as long as i remember like when i was a little kid i would organize everybody in uh kindergarten to try to like make a movie and i remember the adults were like you don't even have a camera and i was <laughs> i was like i don't care we'll get a camera when the, the time comes but i would like cast everybody and design the sets and it, yeah, I've always, it's just something I always wanted to do. Okay, okay. And what was like the first film you ever made? Gosh, the first film, I made this uh, terrible horror movie called uh, Bad Things Happen to Good People and Dogs. And it was okay. very good. Uh, it, it starred my dog. It starred a lot of friends. It had this like six six armed people that are, terrorizing this poor girl and her dog um yeah it, it, it was fun it was my first first project and it was insane <laughs> oh nice no that that actually sounds sounds fun it, i mean it's kind of a terrible movie but it was fun to make and it was like just me and i had a really good costume slash like makeup person but other than that it was just me so it was it was a fun kind of gorilla project Okay, <laughs> and, but like that, that wasn't the only horror you did. I, I, I saw you also made another a horror short called Peter and the Wolf, right? Yeah, Peter and the Wolf is very, uh, that one is also horror. It, it's, it's fun. It's one of my favorite things I've done because uh, oh, nice. it's, it's like, it has like old school kind of special effects, uh, makeup effects for werewolves. And uh, it's super gay and like very short, very stylized to look like sort of 70s, you know, gritty 70s film. Oh, so nice, nice. And it's the first, I think it's the first film that I made that played on a lot of festivals. So it, it's always meaningful because that felt like, you know, sort of a next step in my career when like a lot of festivals suddenly wanted to program something I did. Oh wow! Okay, and I also saw like you you took uh, uh the the fair the fairy tale of Cin Cinderella and you you gave it a queer tale, right? Yeah. So like Peter and the Wolf, uh, Zolushka and Rusalka are like the three fairy tales that I made. And I want to make more and sort of eventually have like an anthology that I can release all together. Nice. But they're all really short. Zolushka is the Cinderella story. Rusalka is the Little Mermaid story. And they're all like really inspired by like Tom of Finland cartoons, like that, those mm -hmm. old gay um, sort of erotic cartoons. And, but they have horror in that. They have like fantasy, um, a, a lot of it is like silent and just like classical music remixed with some like disco or techno. Uh, so I am really happy with those shorts. They're very unique and we're very fun to make because they're not like a huge time commitment to make, you know, yeah. not like a feature that takes years to pull off. <laughs> <laughs> And you have a brand new film out now, Potato Dreams of America. So tell me what that film is about. And, and was it a short film before it was a feature film? Yeah, so uh, Potato Dreams of America, it's my life story, basically. It's 100% uh, autobiographical. And it's a, 
uh, I like to say it's a dark comedy about my uh, growing up gay in USSR and then Russia and then coming over to the US in the late 90s with my mom who became uh, a mail order bride. So it's kind of a, a crazy story full of lots of twists and unexpected oh. turns. Um, before I was able, I wrote the script for Potato Dreams of America about eight years ago, but as you can imagine, like indie films can be hard to pull off, you know, yeah. find the funding for and stuff. So like midway through that process of trying to raise money for the feature, I ended up making a short doc, Little Potato, um, with the same producer, Misha, that I work with. And um, that really helped us make the feature ultimately because the short did really well. Like we won uh, at South by the mm -hmm. best short. And so it was, it got a lot of publicity and it helped us propel to, you know, to sort of get people to support the feature ultimately. Oh, wow. Okay. But they're very different. Like one is a short doc. So it's mostly like talking heads and some visuals, but, and the other one is a feature with, a lot of actors and oh nice okay and what did what did you like most about making making the the full the full length film the one that's out out now my favorite part is always like being on set with my cast and crew because a lot of them are my friends so it always feels like extended family you know it never feels like uh, work or uh like an industry thing it always feels like you know, my best friends. So it's always fun. And there's always uh, like the challenges of making low budget, but very ambitious films. Uh, I kind of love those challenges because it's kind of like a puzzle, you know, trying to figure out how to solve this problem or that problem. And, you know, everybody's super creative around you and you're just having so much fun. So like that part being on set is definitely my favorite part of being, um, yeah, be, making films and making not films specifically for sure. Okay, nice, nice. Casting, casting is also fun. Like figuring out who's gonna, you know, who's gonna play who and reaching out to actors and getting excited with them. So how 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 was that? Like like the the casting casting process for the film. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun. It was. I wrote a lot of the roles for people that I knew in Seattle, like local okay. actors that I've worked with before. And then for the younger actors, like there's a couple of younger actors, we actually did auditions. And I've never done auditions before because generally I always write parts for people that I know or yeah. I, I, you know, I know I want to work with. And for kids, I've never worked with kids before. So I was really intimidated. I was like, are they going to be horrible? <laughs> what is that going to be like? But I was really lucky. The kids that we auditioned, like there were so many talented boys, and when they um, we were just blown away because I'm I'm just always surprised when young people are so talented because it's like where do they get the experience? You know, life experience, especially as an actor, like where do you get that depth from? But um, we found Hirsch Powers who plays the little potato, who's like a little kid, and then yeah. Tyler Bocock, um, who was 19 in real life place the teenage potato so they were both wonderful and then we went out to a casting agent in New York and we wanted to bring on board like a few bigger name actors from LA or New York so mm -hmm. um Leah Delaria who I've always loved and looked up to you know she's such a gay icon and from Orange is the New Block and Broadway yes, yes. she ended up playing my grandma so that was amazing uh Dan Laria from the Wonder Years, very iconic dad from the Wonder Years. He played my stepfather oh, yeah. in the yeah. film. Uh, Jonathan Bennett from Mean Girls came on oh, board to do this, this best friend character in the film, uh, imaginary best friend character. And uh, so, yeah, it was fun. It was sort of a multi process for casting because obviously casting like your friends is different than going out to bigger actors and figuring out figuring that out logistically you know schedules and all that wow okay yeah i love that show orange orange is the new black that, that's 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 such a great show it, it really is yeah that that was awesome when i i saw you had her as part of your cast i was like oh wow <laughs> <laughs> 
she's awesome. <laughs> she's now. Uh, I, I I wish I could travel to New York right now, but she's uh, Leah is in a Broadway called POTUS right now in, on Broadway. Oh, and it's wow. getting really good reviews. She's in it with uh, Vanessa Williams and oh yeah, Rachel Parrish. yeah. So I wish I one of our uh, Hirsch, the little kid, went to New York with his parents and they they saw Leah on stage and they said it was amazing. So nice, jealous. nice. Yeah, I I heard Vanessa Williams was going on tour with that with the with the play. Yeah, I hope. I don't know if they come to Seattle, that would be amazing. Yeah, nice, nice. And and was it fun like working with Jonathan Bennett? Cause I mean the classic the, the classic films that he was in. Yeah, Jonathan was amazing. You know, he's super, super funny, just as you would expect. Uh, very fun to work with Hirsch because him and Hirsch in the film, they have to have this chemistry because he's basically um Hirsch's best friend, imaginary best friend. And Jonathan, as soon as he got on set, he just like clicked with Hirsch. Like they spent a lot of time together laughing, dancing, like talking about Broadway musicals and like pop culture. And they really hit it off. And so when it was time to shoot, you know, a few hours later, they already had this like amazing report. Like they, they've known each other for a long time, which was really helpful for me as a director. Like I didn't have to create that. Oh wow, that's awesome! Nice, nice. And um, where, where, where can fans like watch the film? Like, where, where can they stream it, or is it available on DVD? And yeah, uh, so we're right now we're on VOD everywhere. So like on Apple TV and Amazon and Wudu and all of those uh, video on demand platforms. We're also available on DVD from any major retailer. And then the most exciting thing for me, because I've been a, a mega fan of Vinegar Syndrome um, label, they are releasing uh, a blue special Blu-ray edition that's out for pre-order right now. And it's like packed with special features. There's beautiful original slipcover artwork. It's really, they just did a beautiful job with our distributor, Dark Star and Vinegar Syndrome par partnering up. Wow. Okay. And what do you like doing during your free, free, free time when you're not involved with doing, doing films? Watching movies or reading, uh, honestly, that's my favorite. And eating. <laughs> 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 but yeah, watching movies, uh, watching, uh, especially watching bad movies from the 80s. That's like my yes. favorite. <laughs> yes, it's so much fun. Like, yeah, if I could be like on a, you know, if I was on a uninhabited island, like that would be with enough, <laughs> with enough 80s movies, I, I think I would be okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and do you like, I always ask guests this but when I had them on the show, are you a fan of horror films at all? And if you I do, what are, okay, what are, what are some horror? horror films you love watching i mean i love like i love all horror like starting with like really old classic horror like i was just re-watching uh the mummy with Bor boris karloff and the yes. sequel to that but i love like 80s like that 80s horror um like contemporary horror i'm more i'm more into like like i'm more picky about contemporary horror for whatever reason i don't know, like when i watch older horror it can be really terrible and i'm still enjoying it but with newer movies when they're terrible, like I don't get any enjoyment out of it. So like, but I loved, uh, what did we just see? Uh, I saw with my friends, uh, Man, that new horror. That's oh yeah, out yeah, now. yeah. It was, I, I loved it. And then Cronenberg's uh, new movie, um, Sins of the Future or Crimes of the Future. It was really fun. It was really fucked up and <laughs> weird. <laughs> Sorry for swearing. I don't know if you're. I know, no, no, it's not out. I know you're allowed to curse on here. It's fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> did you did you happen to see like the new Halloween and Scream movie? I saw. God, I I hope I haven't lost track of them. The new Halloween was with Neve Campbell coming back, right? Uh, I like scream, that. scream, scream was oh, the, scream, the new scream, yeah. right? 
Yeah, I, I, I liked it quite a bit, actually. And then the new Halloween that got a lot of that, um, you know, people, a lot of people I know hated it, but I, I really enjoyed it. It almost felt like a comedy, like it a a over the top. Like, I just thought they almost try to make it a satire, you know, like how many arms they can chop off and heads they can chop off. So I, I loved it. It was just like gruesomely ridiculous. Yeah, like I, I was I was a fan of, of Halloween Kills. I'm probably like one of the, the only people that was a fan of Halloween Kills, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, no, I actually I, liked it. There's two of us, apparently. <laughs> I'm excited about... Um, I don't know, oh, because Rob Zombie at one point remade Halloween. I'm thinking yeah. I'm excited for the monsters. Yeah, monsters. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks yeah. so, like, I don't know what to expect. Is it going to be funny? Is it going to be scary? I'm kind of excited to see. I think he's actually a good filmmaker, so I'm excited to see. He what is. Does. Every, everyone, everyone rags on him for casting his, his wife in all the movies. But, you know. It's good. It's Why his not? wife, and, and he don't have to pay her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just good. It's like, <laughs> so, <hey. laughs> yeah, I thought it was like great. What about you? What have you seen that's horror that you love lately? Like, like a recent one, or like just an old? Yeah, one right? other than other than Halloween Kills, is there anything that you're like loved? Well, I just sold the the black the black phone and it was really really good oh nice i want to see that yeah it, it was real it's definitely worth worth the watch it like it was really good the trailer looked really cool and really creepy yeah it's it's it, it's it's creepy it is it's <laughs> <laughs> ethan ethan hawk did, did did such an amazing job yeah i can't imagine i mean it's yeah yeah, I'm excited to see that. I'm, I forgot. That's good. You reminded me. I forgot it's out because I haven't checked for a yeah. while. I was checking like what new mis- movies were out, and there's not that much out that I. Yeah, exactly. And <sighs> and then they they got the other movie I want to see. It's a it's a horror film. Kevin Bacon stars in it. It's called They Slash Them. Oh, is that in theaters now? No, I think it comes out August. Okay. And 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 that actually looks looks really good too. It's a it's a, a Blum 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 House film. Uh huh. And and yeah. you know you, you can't go wrong with Kevin Bacon starring in it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's exciting. I need to see the trailer for that. I haven't. I've never heard any anything about it. So. That, oh okay. I think the last time actually I saw Kevin Bacon on the big screen was in a horror movie, but it was like back at high school. It was uh, uh, where he's like finding this dead people on the walls. What is that? Oh. Did they make a series out of it too, right? Um, I'm trying to, I don't so, Something of Echoes, is that right? Oh, Stir, I... Stir of Echoes. I think that's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. It was good. Yeah, it was like his sidekick in it, and yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that movie. <laughs> 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 and like, are are you a big fan of Halloween season? Like, do you dress up for Halloween? You know, I'm super lame because I every year I say I'm gonna do something. Like, I swear I'm gonna like dress up and. And every year, like, it gets so close, and I'm like, oh, I didn't do anything, and I end up, like, not. I think the last time I dressed up was, I don't know, like, 10 years ago. Oh, so, really? Kinda, yeah, it's kind of lame. Because I do love the idea of it, and I always want to do it, but then it's, like, always, I, I always remember too late. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a lot of friends. Like, I have a friend who works on a lot of my films, Eric Warren, who does amazing you know prosthetic makeups and stuff and so i i always am like oh i should start talking to eric about like doing something like really outrageous yeah you know? definitely pay him to like make me up as like i don't know like something really cool but uh, someday oh. <laughs> all right all right how about you me i every year like I, I, that my favorite holiday is halloween and and i like 
when it comes around the time, I'm always going to all the different scary houses and the haunted hay rides. And then I dress up for Halloween, go to Halloween parties. And so it's like nice. my, my favorite time of the year. It's the most fun I have. I love it. Do you already know who you're going to be for, for this upcoming one? You know, I'm still trying to decide that. Like I, I last, last, last year I was the, the, the typical Halloween Michael Myers, like a, it was, you oh, know, nice. but this, this, this year, I'm trying to figure out what the, you know, what I was at after seeing that movie, the, the black phone, I was thinking of, of dressing up as that. Oh yeah. He looks very scary. And, and uh, yeah. With a hat. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And balloon. Right. Doesn't he have like uh -huh. a black balloon? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of doing something like like that because I'm sure they're going to start selling the mask. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. They, they... Either that or 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 it Pennywise. <laughs> oh, Pennywise is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Pennywise, I, I imagine, would be harder, like more elaborate. You know. Than... Yeah, yeah, that's true. You're right about that. Yeah. But that would be really fun. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> 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 and what about songs like what kind of, of music do you like listening to i, I kind of it changes because i i get um i have i mean i always make a mistake like i really like something and i overplay it until like <laughs> it makes me nauseous you know? and then i don't play it anymore so i'm trying to think like and i'm always kind of behind on music i have to say okay. like like dua lipa right now i like you know i I, dis I discovered this um, much older album by Goldfrapp called uh, Felt Mountain. And that's mm -hmm. like my favorite thing right now too. It's very, it's kind of reminds me of like Giallo, you know, Italian horror movie soundtracks. It has yeah, that like yeah, exactly. eerie quality. I love it. Um, nice. But it nice. kind of changes, you know, because I overplay it. And then like lately I've been listening to soundtracks. Like I, I, uh, I bought what did I? I bought the original Total Recall soundtrack, and it's so cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's like it's really awesome. Um, it's like I read to it, I work out to it. It's it's fun. Oh, and the new Dune, the new Dune soundtrack is really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It's so trippy. It's like I feel like it's very experimental and like odd the way that the sounds are chosen for it. It's really cool. Oh, nice, nice. And um, do you do you have any 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 other stuff coming up too besides your film that's out now? Yeah, I'm excited. My uh, I have a series called Capitol Hill, and that one is going to be released by the same distributor, Dark Star. And so there's two seasons of it, and it's uh, it's sort of a blend of parody of old 1970s tv shows like dynasty and murder she wrote and oh like, wow Love yeah Boat. uh but also it has horror and it has a lot of characters i played uh by drag queens by uh, from rupaul's drag race like jinx monsoon and ben de la creme and robbie turner so it's kind of a mishmash of a lot of genres but it's visually i'm very proud of how visually it came out it looks like a, okay. like live action cartoon almost it's very vibrant and uh stylized and fun Oh wow! Well, okay, I'll, I'll I'll definitely keep a look a lookout for that one. The first, so the first season of it is going to be on the same Blu-ray, Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray with yeah. Potato Dreams of America. It's sort of going to be like one of the special features. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. Oh wow! Okay, nice, nice. <laughs> and where can fans find find you at? Like, what's your pages? Your social? Yeah, my social, my personal Instagram is Potato Hurley, uh, and it links to my um, Twitter, I think, which I don't, Twitter I don't really use, but, and then uh, Potato Dreams Film is the film's Instagram page, and then Capitol Hill TV is the page for Capitol Hill series, which oh, okay. is also coming out, yeah. Sweet, nice. Well, I want to thank you again so much for coming on the show. It was it was really fun talk, 
talking to you about the film and I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes next. Thank you so much, really. Thanks for having me and really great meeting you. Same, same. Thank, thank you again. It was, it was really, it was really fun meeting you. Of course. Yeah. And keep, keep in touch. I definitely will. Like uh, I, I, as soon as I put the interview up, I'll send you the link and everything. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Rocco. Yeah, definitely, buddy.